precious son Yahushua, El Mashiach, and the precious, precious through Hakadish, Holy Spirit. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we thank you for this blessed holy day that you sit apart among all the days of the week, that you blessed Abba Yahweh, and you made it a day sit apart for your sit apart children with your sit apart spirit. And we thank you, Father Abba Yahweh. We thank you, Yahushua HaMashiach, who is our Lord of the Shabbat. We thank you, Holy Spirit, Rekadesh, that you fill us with your anointing of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father Abba Yahweh, for your truth that is revealed to your children. We pray, Abba Yah, that your truth be blessed to your other children around the world who are scattered around the world in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, who are seeking of your truth, who are seeking of the entire truth of the Yahweh in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Glory be to your wonderful name. With the authority that Yahushua has given to me, Abba Yahweh, I claim it Luke T19, I bind you, Satan, away from this place in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. I bind up all spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly place, in the ocean, on the land, around this house, in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. And I bind up my flesh right now in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. And anything Abba Yahweh that would try to hinder your word in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. I ask of your Holy Spirit, the Rekadesh, and Mama Shekinah, Fill me with your liquid fire, your holy anointing today to speak forth the words of Abba Yahweh. Oh Father, may your word reach your children. I pray and the Holy Spirit will go out and open the spiritual ears and the spiritual eyes of your children in the name of Yahweh Shemshir. May they receive your word today. May they hear loud and clear. May they be convicted in their spirits to have a repentant heart, Abba Yahweh, in the name of Yahushua Mashiach. Before it's too late, Abba Yahweh, we reach out to them, Abba Yahweh. We ask you, Father, to open your heart, to remove the pride, remove the heart, the hardness of your heart, Abba Yahweh, in the name of Yahushua Mashiach. And may you soften it to receive your truth, Abba Yahweh, with your love, Yahushua Mashiach. Thank you, Father of the Yahweh. Thank you for using this broken vessel of clay to do your will in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, to bless your children in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory be to you, wonderful name. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Amen. Praise Yahushua. I'm going to, to begin with the excerpt prophecy of number 11, spoken through his holy ring maiden, Elizabeth Elijah. I pray that the Holy Spirit will open your spiritual ears and your spiritual eyes and your spiritual heart to receive the words of Abba Yahweh, and may you be blessed. from prophecy number 11. As the murders of innocent babies yet in your mother's wombs are ripped apart so savagely, and you think because the sinful world legalizes it, it is legal of me? Even your murderers on death row, you try and think of merciful and quick deaths for them. The laws give at least 10 years more in most cases at expense of taxpayers your tax money, to lengthen their lives, to invent more merciful ways to kill those that took lives without any mercy. Yet babies so precious to me, babies I have counted the days till their birth. Put my spirit in them, cause them to grow strong and healthy in mother's wounds, so they will breathe at time of birth. And these innocent babes, never knowing wrong, are tortured as their unheard screams echo in my ears. Those that have done these abortions and not confessed and asked for forgiveness and turned away from this sin, for all eternity you will hear the screams of all those babies as one of your punishments you have waiting for you in hell. Never a break from the cries of the murdered babies or the screams. Do you know how a crying baby gets on your nerves? 
imagine millions in your ears for eternity. Repent now, nurses, doctors, women doing these things for your own sake. Repent now, politicians who pass these laws. Supreme Court, you're not supreme in my eyes. You're not above my laws. God Almighty alone is supreme. Almighty Yahweh alone is judge and jury and executioner. Jesus Christ came so you could have life and life more abundantly. Repent, turn away from this sin for I will hold you accountable. The blood of the unborn is on your hands. Why? Because I have given mankind a choice. A choice to obey that which is instinct given to every woman and man to protect the young, nurture the young, and yet they are savagely murdered. Woe is unto the ones who call this legal. Woe be unto the doctors and nurses who take this in this murder, take part in this murder. Woe be unto the politicians who pass the laws of these innocent babies being slaughtered. Woe be unto you who have stayed silent far too long, for I hear their screams. The baby souls return to whence they came from heaven, but their souls are ripped out of this world. Unmerciful, cruelty beyond words. I allow the souls to leave only to prove man inhumanity to man knowing what choice that mother already made, grieving and giving her every chance to repent, knowing she won't, angry because she won't repent. These are the words of the Creator, our Father, Abba Yahweh. These are His words. I stand before you and before my God, Abba Yahweh, and I will show him the precious through her good news. Abba Yah, use my voice to speak out for the unborn whose voice cannot be heard, but only you, Abba Yahweh, hear and echo the echo of your screams. right to know the fact the full aborting your baby. Abortion carries other tones of politics, health, law, religion, and even economics. One group claims a baby has the right to life from the point of conception onward, and that abortion is murder. The other group screams a woman will not be denied the right to choose what is done with her body. And on and on it goes. Before saying any more, let's stop and listen to what God Yahweh has to say about when life begins. As he spoke through the Psalms of King David. Psalms chapter 139 verses 13 to 16. For you fashioned my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you because I am awesomely made, wonderfully. Your works are wonders. I know this very well. My bones were not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes could see me as an embryo, but in your book, all my days were already written. My days had been shaped before any of them existed. In fact, your baby is a living human organism from the point of conception until death. The most important fact in the entire abortion debate is that a baby is alive from the point of conception onward. Modern medical science surrounding ultrasound sonograms 
has made this issue a literal fact. King David had no knowledge of ultrasound and sonograms, but God, Yahadeh, revealed to him the true facts in the matter. The primary differences between a fetus and a newborn baby is that an unborn baby gets oxygen from the mother's circulatory system via the umbilical cord. And a newborn baby gets it from environmental air. When does the fetus begin to move? There is no doubt that the fetus can be seen moving during the eighth week menstrual age. In week 12, the fetus now sleeps, wakens, and exercises muscle energetically, turning its ear, curling its toes, and opening and closing his mouth. The palm, when stroked, will make a tight fist. In week 13, by now you can tell if it's a boy or a girl. Month 5, the ears are functioning and there's evidence that the fetus hears quite a bit. Such as the mother's voice and heartbeat, as well as external noises. Month 6, if the baby were born in this month and given the proper care, he or she would survive. This information has been provided as a public service in support of the scientific fact that life begins at the point of conception. Even if you don't care to raise your baby, many parents are praying for a baby to adopt. Abortion is a sin. Abortion is murder. If you believe in abortion is simply an act of terminating a fetus, which is not a real human being yet, you're only fooling yourself. You have been deceived. Please let your child live. But please let it live. And have the same chance at life that you have. Yahweh Yahushua will bless all those that do not remain silent. We will speak out on behalf of the unborn babies. They will have been apostles prophets, evangelists, teachers, and pastors. There are other ways around abortion. Adoption is one of them. I'm sure people who can't get pregnant will love to have your child. It is sickening how so many people close and harden their hearts. Not only is it against God's law, but it's totally inhuman. The women who enter abortion clinics as they are lied to and they have blindfolds placed on them, they are not given a choice. Abortion is the only answer given. The murder of innocent precious gift from God of Yahweh must stop. There should be a law on this. People go to jail and prison for murder. Why not the babies? It is the same thing. They're alive. We've heard what God had to say about the murder of unborn human beings. Each year, approximately 4,300 pre-born infants are legally put to death under the protection of the Supreme Court's 1973 decision in the case of Roe versus Wade. About 97% of abortions take place for convenience or to avoid embarrassment. 97%. If you're considering an abortion for any reason, please, we want to hear from you. Please consider the consequence of your actions. Your unborn child is a human being. It's life, not just a fetus. Please care and have a heart. I'd just like to warn you people out there, and I'm going to show some pictures that may offend some others and may make you feel sick, but I want the world to see what's happening 
to these unborn babies that Yahweh has created. Their voices need to be heard. Dead, never had a chance. Yahweh had a wonderful life prepared for the soul. Now he or she is back in heaven, wondering, why did my mother kill me? Didn't she love me? Take another look at these other pictures. It will make you sick to your stomach. But please look at it and imagine the pain they go through. This 21 week old was pre-born baby. Was taken from a Java North Dallas Women's Clinic. I wonder how it feels to have both of your legs ripped off while you struggle helplessly. These babies were killed by an injection of concentrated saline salt solution into the mother's womb. It burned their skin off them while they were still alive. The babies also breathed it in and swallowed it, frying their insides. Did you know that some of these babies are then born alive despite this torture and are then disposed of? Does that look like a fetus? Does that look like an embryo? This child is as human as I am. Saloon Solution did this to what is left of his skin. Dug out of the trash with the disposable needles and towels. Disposable. It's how we treat our unborn babies. Like trash. Please care. We don't care what country you live in. What will we use for an excuse when we face Father God Yahweh, the God of creation, and His Son, the God of salvation, Yahushua? You care to continue with this abomination after you have seen these pictures and heard what Yahweh has said about the sin. This is murder, inhuman. What if this baby was you? A message to the women who have done this. There is forgiveness through Yahushua, Jesus Christ. But turn away from their sin of murder and repent and want others not to do this. It's just so inhuman. I look at his shit, I look at his shit, I look at his shit. These are his children. He literally created and put inside the wounds of his mothers.
children. Not to get rid of them. Not to kill them. They're a blessing. I would like to read what a 13 year old thought about abortion who was led by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit through Kadesh. These are her words. I am only 13, but I know the difference between right and wrong. This is a 13 year old. An abortion is definitely wrong. The excuse, it's my body. I can do with it what I want. It's silly if that were the case. Suicidal people shouldn't be helped because it's their bodies. Prostitution should be legal as well as drugs because it's their bodies. And they can do with it what they want, right? Then there's the excuse, it's not alive. Okay, it has a heartbeat, hands, feet, toes, eyes, ears. So just because you can't touch them and they haven't been born yet, they're not alive. As for it's my decision, yeah, it is, but it was also your decision to have unprotected sex and obviously that was a wrong decision too. Rape is very sad, but I don't think abortion is a good decision there either. It's not the baby's fault and you can give it up for adoption. Medical emergency, I imagine, are very difficult, but the woman has had her chance at life. The child has a Abortion doesn't make you unpregnant, it makes you the parent of a dead child. I am going to read another excerpt from Prophecy 11. This is God Yahweh's word. Tell them, tell them, my daughter, once again, although even those who call them by my name, yet do nothing but shake their heads. And others, I am so proud to call my children, lay their lives, reputations, and finances down to protect the innocent babes in the mother's womb. These are the ones I will reward. Why aren't the churches supporting those willing to sacrifice their all to protect against these murders of innocent babies? They lost their jobs, imprisoned, mocked, and why? Because they heard my voice and my conviction, they said, speak up, don't stay silent. I have heard their prayers, I have seen their tears, and I felt their pain. Have you? Every church service should be praying for them. Every church service should be praying for my conviction, my judgment on those doing such things, allowing these murders, yet how few do. I am grievously angry, for you say your mind, and you are ignoring the cries of the unborn and the cries of those that sacrifice. They're all to protect and stop the slaughter of the unborn. Rise up, speak up in my name. Pray, 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 till you see this horror cease. You want to know why I have allowed this to go on? Because I've been waiting for my children to call upon my name, to stop them, to prove they care. Not just a handful, but millions should have spoken forth as these laws against my laws were passed. There should never be a church service without this prayer going forth. Pastors, you will be held accountable. You have been warned. Congregations warn your pastors. They are supposed to be representing me. Urge them every service to pray for this horror to cease, for my judgment to come upon those that refuse to repent. Stop giving me lukewarm prayers. I will not listen. Give me prayers with passion, with a heart that cares. Stop the ritual prayers. They are merely memorizing words. I will not hear. This is from your mind and mouth, not your heart. 
great sinkhole shall open up, and the earth shall swallow these abortion clinics. Not anything man has done by my hand shall punch the earth. Where the most blood is spilled, innocent blood, for not even war is innocent blood shed. But upon, upon the altars of Satan, these children are slaughtered for convenience sake, for vanity, for selfishness, for fear, for greed. I will give them something to fear. They will fear the Almighty Yahweh who created their souls. They so viciously murder. They will fear Yahweh for whom they mock and say it's legal. They will fear the ones they put the Christians in their faces to warn them this is murder. This is sin. For it won't be anything the Christians do to cause them to fear other than pray and move the hand of Yahweh through those prayers. But the women, doctors, nurses, politicians, those applauding the murders of my innocent souls shall see my face and my spirit upon my children sent forth as troops to pray. Remember the walls of Jericho. Remember how it was not human hands that brought down the walls of Jericho. And so it shall be done again, and they won't be able to fill the abortion clinics fast enough. Tell them, my child, and teach them there is yet time to repent, but soon there will be none. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? It was not human hands that brought the fire brimstone. It rained from heaven where it is stored up, and it will come again. Evil ones, those practicing this, and so much worse, you have been born. Your laws can legalize homosexual marriages, but I decree it is sin. It is a mockery of marriage, and what I create to be holy, it is not legalized in my eyes. Pastor, some of you have joined in these love feasts of strange flesh by saying nothing you have partaken in. Rise up, speak up, tell the heathen to shut up in my name. Don't listen to their lies anymore. They're out after the children. We speak about the mother's choice. But that mother had a choice to not have sex when she knew that a baby could be conceived. It is the baby that has no choice whether to be conceived or not. God Almighty Yahweh's wrath will fall on all who take part in abortion and those who do not speak out against us and warn others. Those who do not remember to pray for this, to stop. Even if it doesn't stop, at least you took the time to cry out in behalf of the baby's blood that is being shed in their tiny bodies, used as a lab rat in laboratories. This world is blood soaked the portions of innocent babies that were tortured to death. We followers of Yahweh and Yahushua have been silenced by the cause not to go on the premises and warn abortionists. But we should not be silent when we assemble ourselves to pray and when we pray alone. How is it that even stray unwanted animals are put to death as merciful as possible? as well as serial murderers, and yet innocent babies that want nothing more than to be held in their mother's arms, loving arms, are tortured to death, either ripped apart limb by limb, or with saline solution that burns the flesh right off their fragile bodies. The ungodly had better fear Yahweh, who created those tiny souls and bodies of the slaughtered babies, for he will not be mocked much longer. A word was given to the prophet Elizabeth Elijah that Yahweh has put invisible sinkholes under every abortion clinic in the world. Invisible fault lines, and when Yahweh speaks forth the word from heaven, these invisible fault lines shall open up, and the abortion clinics and all buildings that promote ungodliness will be swallowed up in the sinkhole, and the people in building will descend right into the bowels of hell, 
while the people are still alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yahweh has already judged this world. When you see this happen, remember that you were warned and believe that God Yahweh truly speaks out of his true holy prophets. His prophet is Elijah for this end time. For his word shall never return to him void. And just like in the time of Moses, for those that came against Moses, as Moses spoke forth that Yahweh would open up the ground and the people would go into hell alive. It happened. And as in the time of Moses, it is prophesied under a heavy anointing on his prophet that it shall happen again. Neither man nor woman will be blamed for all will know at the same time this happens, it will happen all over the world. Wow. His words will never return to him void. So repent of this, this atrocity. Repent of this evil. Repent of it, please, in the name of Yahushua. I'm going to show you the pictures like a window to the mother's womb. This is a 56 day old baby, eight weeks. The heart has been beating for more than a month. The stomach produces digestive juices and the kidneys have begun to function. 40 muscle sets begin to operate in conjunction with the nerve system. The fetus body responds to touch, although the mother will not feel movement yet. This is at 13 weeks, 91 days old. The fetus now sleeps, awakens, and exercises muscles energetically, turning its head, curling its toes, and opening and closing its mouth. The fetus breathes amniotic fluid to develop its respiratory system. Finally, he has begun to grow on his head. This is at 19 weeks, 142 days old. Half the pregnancy has passed, and the fetus is about 12 inches long. The mother has definitely begun to feel movement by now. If the sound is especially loud or startling, the fetus may jump in reaction to it. created 
in the womb. So why do these precious babies not have rights to their own life? Are they or are they not of Yahweh God's creation? The divine command theory would support that it is our duty to ensure that a human life, whether it is an adult or baby in a womb, be given life and not have it taken away. Therefore, abortion is morally wrong and bad and unjustified. It says in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, Therefore Yahweh himself will give you people a sign. The young woman will become pregnant, bear a son, and name him Emmanuel. Yahweh already prophesied before he gave his son Yahushua. Before he was placed in his mother's womb. Just like John the Baptist, when the angel went to Zechariah in the temple and told him that his wife would bear a son and to name him John before the child was put into the womb of his mother. Just like Samson, an angel also visited his mother who could not have children and told her that she will have a son and with instructions that she is not to drink any wine or unforbidden food until his birth. Also special instructions saying that that he is to be dedicated to Yahweh, to be called a Nazarite, that they are not to cut his hair. All of this was told before the life was put in there. Yahweh already has given life in the mum's womb. It is not an embryo. It is life. Their life was already planned and chosen before they were born. Life already existed once they were created and put into the mother's womb. Is there not enough proof for you? Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you to a prophet to the nations. So God Yahweh knows all men before their conception, all women before their conception. Galatians chapter 1 verse 15, 16. But when God who picked me out before I was born and called me by his grace, chose to reveal his son to me so that I may announce him to the Gentiles, I did not consult anyone. Paul testified that God already picked him before he was born. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 5. So now Yahweh says, He formed me in the womb to be a servant, to bring Jacob back to him, to have Israel gathered to him, so that I will be honored in the sight of God Yahweh, my God, having become my strength. And in Job chapter 31 verse 15. Didn't he who made me in the womb make them too? Didn't the same one shape us both before our birth? Yes, it is the same God that created you women and created those babies in your tummy. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 24, here's what Yahweh says, Your Redeemer, He who formed you in the womb, I am Yahweh who makes all things, who stretch up the heavens all alone, who spread up the earth all by myself. He is the Creator. He created us human in His likeness. In his image. Psalms chapter 100, verse 3. Be aware that Yahweh is God. It is he who made us. And we are his, his people, the flock in his pasture. Luke chapter 1, verse 41 and 44. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb stirred. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ruach, the Holy Spirit. For as soon as the sound of, it, of your greeting reached my ears, this is Elizabeth speaking to Mary, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. She was six months pregnant and the baby leaped for joy. The baby already had feelings. He already had a personality. Everything that God's created put on the Baba. 
Luke chapter 1, verse 31. Look, you will become pregnant. You will give birth to a son. And you are to name him Yahushua. Matthew chapter 18, verse 10. See that you never despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that the angels in heaven are continue seeing the face of my Father in heaven. I pray that you are convinced now to know that there is life in those of you before you pull into your womb. It is life. Please do not abort your babies. Give up adoption. Please, please repent of this, this evil sin because it is a sin. The Lord called Jeremiah when he was a young man as I read in Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. And he said to him, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you and appointed you a prophet to the nations. God Yahweh knew Jeremiah even before his body was formed in his mother's womb. There is a lot of dispute nowadays about whether an embryo is a human being or not. Now you know the truth. You clearly know the truth. Don't deny it. Or else Yahweh will judge you. Here is a verse that should clear that doubt forever. Because God Yahweh says he knew Jeremiah before he was formed. When Jeremiah was a microscopic speck in his mother's womb. God Yahweh knew him and consecrated him to be a prophet. How many prophets and apostles and pastors have been aborted? Satan fears God's children. And he uses you to do this. He uses the doctors and nurses to deceive you, to lie to you women. That is a great encouragement for us to know that God Yahweh has his eye on us. <clears throat> Even when we were just microscopic spits, just conceived in our mother's womb. He has a plan for our lives, just as he had a plan for Jeremiah. He has a plan for each and every one of us that he created. But it's your choice to fulfill his plan. Just imagine when Jeremiah went through all those difficulties, how this thought must have encouraged him. All of us too should think about that whenever we face trials and difficulties, God Yahweh chose you before you were born. And his plan for your life will be fulfilled. So don't ever get discouraged. Don't be afraid of fear if you fall pregnant. Don't kill the child. Give it up for adoption. Face your fears. Because Yahweh did not give us a spirit of fear. That is from Satan. For the sake of the life that Yahweh has created, a gift from Abba Yahweh inside you, woman. I pray, Abba Yahweh, that your children hear your words. If you're convicted in your spirit, if Mama Shekinah, your Holy Spirit convicts you now, I pray you have a repented heart and repent of all you've wronged. Please. There is nothing that Yahushua cannot forgive you while you have time. But tomorrow may be too late. You don't know when the last breath comes. We don't know what comes tomorrow. But if you hear this word, this could be your salvation. Receive it and repent before Yahweh. And receive Yahushua. Cry out and ask for forgiveness and warn others to not do the same thing this evil sin. If you feel led to receive Yahshua in your heart, to let him change your heart, to form you in his image and his love, say this salvation prayer with me. Dear Yahshua, I accept you now as my Lord and Savior. You're the God I love. I believe you paid the price for my sins at Calvary. You died and you rose from the dead on the third day. You died and rose again on the third day. 
and I ask you to come into my heart. And I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean of all unrighteousness. Wash me clean of all unrighteousness. I am sorry I have sinned. I am sorry I have sinned. And I turn away from those sins. And I turn away from those sins. Thank you for filling me with the Holy Spirit. And giving me the desire to serve you all the days of my life. And giving me the desire to serve you all the days. And, your, and live your life in me, Yahushua. And live your life in me, So you will be glorified. So you will be glorified. Thank you for giving me the desire to read your Bible. Thank you for giving me the desire to read your Bible. And give me the wisdom to understand it. And give me the wisdom to understand it. Thank you for loving me and saving my soul. Thank you for loving me and saving my soul. Causing my faith to grow. Causing my faith to grow. So one day I will be with you in heaven. So one day I will be with you in heaven. Fill me with the Holy Spirit now. Fill me with the Holy Spirit now. And deliver me from the evil one in your name, Yahushua, I pray. And deliver me from the evil one in your name, Yahushua. Help me, Yahushua, to remember. Help me, Yahushua, to remember. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of Yahweh. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of Yahweh. And you came to save us sinners. And you came to save us sinners. That's why you called our Savior. That's why you called our Savior. Amen. Amen. Oh, Father, Abba Yahweh, I praise you and I glorify your holy name. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your blessed word and your children today. I pray that your children is open your heart and receive your warnings and receive your words. Out of your mercy and your love, you continue to warn your children. You continue to warn us out of your mercy, Abba Yahweh. And I thank you for your love. I pray that they know how much you love them. That you love them enough to warn, Abba Yahweh, to repent of their sins and to receive Yahshua as their Lord God and Savior. Oh, Father, Mia, thank you for blessing me and anointing me to speak forth your words today. Thank you, Abba Yahweh, Yahushua, Hamashiach, and Manushakanya. Glory be to your wonderful name. I pray that your children are convicted today with your beautiful word. Abba Yahweh, that they receive and open their spiritual eyes and ears and receive the truth. In the name of Yahushua, I pray. Amen and amen. Bless your children. Oh, sing it.